Welcome to the River Life Church Podcast. We hope you will be blessed by this week's message. For more information, please visit riverlife.org.sg. Good morning to you all. Glad to be back here again. And uh, this morning, I want to share about the power of testimonies. Uh, I just feel that this is really the, the message of the season right now, especially just now I saw you having this um, testimony tree. I thought this is so relevant. This is so relevant because this is what, what put, God put on my heart. And I, I asked uh, Ly- Pastor Lionel for permission to kind of share on this subject. I feel like this Christmas, we really need to be intentional about sharing our, our testimonies, to reach out with our testimonies. I want to begin with my testimony. I started out now. Let's pray first. Can I ask you to pray with me? Father, we just want to commit this time to your hands. We ask, Lord, that you, you come by your Holy Spirit to touch everyone in a profound way. Lord, cause your truth to fall as good seeds on good grounds in our heart, Lord. That which will bear roots, that which will bear much fruit for you, for your kingdom's purpose, for your glory, for your delight, Lord. So come and grace this time that we have in your presence and bless us. Bless us as we hear your heartbeat expressed to us. We thank you, thank you, pray all this in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. And everyone say, Amen, Amen. I want to quickly uh, begin with sharing this. Many of you knew I grew up in a very devout Buddhist family. I've shared before and and, uh, my father came from China and many generations of uh, Buddhist vegetarianism, you know, and and I was brought up really devout. By the time I was five, primary five, primary six, I was actually chanting the the Buddhist uh, mantras. You know, uh, some of you may know the Tabe Zhou Jing and all that thing. You know, I I I I was trained to do that. I could do it for hours a day as a kid. You know, but by the time I was 13 years old, uh, uh, I developed a very 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 severe uh, migraine pain, very severe form of migraine headache. You know, which I would only come, and, and it was so bad in my trigeminal nerves that, that I, I felt like killing myself. It was, I had suicide thoughts, you know, because it was so extreme and no painkillers could, could suppress it in any way. It was only years later that I found out that, that it is medically called suicide headache. It's one of the worst forms of migraine pain. You know, so no wonder I, I was suicidal. I was, you know, and I'm so glad that at about, 14 years old, God intervened in my life because someone came to share testimony with me in school. Uh, some Christian friends uh, in my scout group came to me and shared with me. But in the beginning, I re- really rejected them, rejected them because I, was, I had a lot of fear. Uh, I was trained up from young never to listen to people sharing other faiths with you. you know. And by 14 years old, uh, by, by, by 14 years old, by f- crossing over to 15, the Lord really intervened in my life. I was at the, at the breaking point of my life where I, I'll, be, I'll be carried out of my classroom every day, almost every day, to the sick bay, what we call the sick bay. And it was at that point that I, I yielded. I opened my heart and, and, and Jesus came to my life. But it wasn't for, um, this, this happy moment did not last long. I, 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 I ex- began to experience his presence, his love. Uh, within the, and I secretly went to church, you know, secretly, you know, for a few months. And then, and then I was found out. When I was found out, it was, it was terrible. My parents uh, wanted to throw me out of the family. They really reprimanded me. And they said, you've got to stop going to church. You, 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 or or you, you can just leave this house and you don't have to come back. You know, at 15 years old, you know, almost 15, still 14, I, I was scared. So I stopped going to church. And you know what? What came after that would be five years of, of wasted life. And it, well, I think it must have been five years that one of my most re- regrettable years because I short-circuited God's healing process in my body, God's restoration in my heart. It, my, my spiritual life came to a standstill and then I began to backslide even. Because cut off from the church, cut off from the community of the saints, you know, cut off from a, 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 a genuine, uh, authentic walk with God, I just did not do well. And none of us have been designed to do well away from God's family, God's people, God's word. Amen? Amen? Really, really, don't ever walk out on God's family. Don't ever walk away from the word of God. Never, never depart from him. Five years, I not only got sicker, I got worse. The pain got worse. 
I, I, I also live a wanton life and damage my soul even more. You know, I picked up habits, I, I was depressed, you know, and, and it was at 19 that I left home and went to the army that God could intervene again in my life because now I'm away from my family, I could go to church again. My colleague reached out to me. I mean, he just, he was just persistent to reach out to me. And by that time, I was living such guilt and shame and sin and, and I did, I, I thought, no, God wouldn't want me, you know, I, I, I feel so ashamed, you know, myself, you know, and, and my colleague persistently reached out to me, shared testimonies with me, you know, and, and, and finally, finally I yielded and I, the moment I stepped back into church, wow, wow, I mean, that restoration came back full blast in my life. So I realized in those years that by now, wow. I really needed God's people. I needed a community. I needed, I needed to be part of what God is doing in His house. You know, and I want to encourage us all as, this, as, a, test, as a testimony that never, never depart from the house of God. Never depart from the house of God. We, we, are, we have not been designed to thrive alone. So having come back to the church, I started to thrive. God started healing me. My pain started to diminish away. My severe, severe headache began to fade away. Uh, uh, and God started restoring my soul, st restoring my heart. I was estranged from, estranged from my family, and that was also the time where He began to restore me back with my family. He started healing me in every arena of my life. I now cannot imagine how we can even live life without God. You know? And so from that time onwards, I, I have been passionate to share the faith with people. Especially, especially in the beginning, I did not have much biblical knowledge, but that did not stop me from wanting to share my testimonies. I would share testimony with people enthusiastically, sincerely, of what God has done in my life, and especially how He has healed me and delivered me from the suicide headache. You know. and, and you know what happened as an outcome? Every time I share testimonies, people get encouraged. People were getting saved. People were getting reconciled with God. Backslidden Christian come back to Jesus. You know, people got healed when they hear testimonies. Testimonies is powerful because it creates faith in people's heart. To believe that, wow, if God does that for you, God can do that for me too. And so people get saved. From, I can remember, as far as I can remember, from the onset of, of, of my intentionally sharing tes testimonies with people. I was already seeing people getting born again, people getting saved, getting reconciled with God, backslidden them, Christian come home, sick people say, then, then, then you, mean, you mean God can also heal me too? Can you pray for me? Uh, I did not know how, I, so I thought, I did not know how to pray, but okay, I'll pray for you, and people get, get healed, you know. And, and so now, 30 over years have transpired. I'm still sharing testimonies. In fact, right now, I'm sharing testimonies. So this morning, I want to share with us about testimonies. Testimonies are powerful. Testimonies not only bless believers and help strengthen their faith. Testimonies bless pre-believers and unbelievers to cause them to have faith in their heart too. That, wow, if God can do that in your life, God can do that in mine. And that's why I know that testimonies are powerful. And this season, in this year end season, I really want to, I just feel impressed of the Lord to share about this. And we need to be very deliberate and very intentional to share of what God has done in our lives. Can I hear an amen? We must be intentional about this. Actually, from the point of being born again, from the moment we encounter Christ, we all naturally have an urge on the inside of us to want to tell people about our experience in Christ. This impetus, this drive comes from the desire that, that, that others, especially loved ones, especially people whom we care for, that they would also come to experience God, that they would also come to know His goodness, that they would also be saved, that their lives too can be restored, their family can be restored, broken relationship can be healed. You know, we, we want good for them. And that's why there's, there's this urge. And I tell you, ultimately, this desire to share comes from this innate call that God has placed upon every one of us, His children. 
the call to be witnesses for Him. Do you agree? We are, every, every child of God has a call and a purpose here on earth to be a witness for Christ. And Jesus tells us to witness, to be a witness for Him. He told us to be His witnesses. So every child of God is called to be a witness for Him. That's why there's innately this urge in you right from the point of being born again. Do you want to tell some other people about what you are experiencing in Christ? Because it comes from your call on the inside. And you know what? When, with this call that God has placed upon you, He's also faithful to put His power in you to be able to carry out that call. That's the faithfulness of our God. He never calls us to do something that He does not empower us for. Amen? And so, there is a power to witness. There is a power to be a witness. To be witnesses for God. God does put His power on you. That's the goodness of our King. He never sends us out on an assignment without the resources, without the empowerment, that we need for, for the job at hand. So having called us to be witnesses, God backs us up. He backs us up with His supernatural power. Then the house of God, in the Bible, we call it the anointing. That's an anointing. You know, anointing, I want to explain to some people who are new, you know, they thought, you know, annoying, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you're so used to the words in the house of God, and you know, it's Christianese, you know, it's a language called Christianese, you know. Yeah. The Lord anoints you, the Lord anoints you, and uh, you know, pre- those new people like, you ask the Lord to anoy you, why? You see that annoying, you know. Yeah. I want to say the anointing is a real substance. The anointing is the supernatural endowment from on high, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that God puts on us to be able to be witnesses for Him. So let's examine some scriptures together so that you know what you've been called to, what you've been equipped with. I want to bring you to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says here, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So first he puts a power in you, then he gives you the assignment. Go. And to do what? Very specifically, to be his witnesses. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to know there is a supernatural power. Supernatural because it came from the Holy Spirit. It's not conjured up by man. It cannot be produced by our human ability. There is a supernatural power latent in you, resident in you, that God has placed there for you to be able to be a powerful witness for Christ. For you to be an effective witness for Him. It is there. You may say, but really, I've never experienced that. That's because you've never witnessed. Because it flows only when you begin to tap on it. When you begin to tap on it. To share with someone about the reality of Christ in your life. Every time you testify to someone about God, this power is released out of you to begin to move upon the listener's heart to bring about the revelation of God, to bring about His awareness of of His or her need for God. It is supernatural. I want to testify this, that witnessing is a supernatural venture. It is a supernatural venture. It is not a, a, a human conversation. There is a supernatural element with it because the Scripture tells us the Holy Spirit works with us when we witness. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us. There's an anointing that He places on your word as you share Christ in your own unique, simple ways. So you must know that God is at work whenever you share, whenever you testify, whenever you share with someone about Jesus. Amen? Yeah. At least six, seven people are catching it now. I'm encouraged. Yeah. I say God works with you when you testify. That's why also you must know this, that your confidence is not based on your qualifications, your eloquence or lack of it, you know, uh, your your, uh, scholarly knowledge and all that. Your confidence is based on the fact that the Holy Spirit is in you anointing your words. 
Amen. And that takes your eyes off of yourself. That I'm not qualified. You know, who am I? Or I don't know enough scriptures. You know, and that's why I started out this time with a personal testimony. I can remember as far back as from right from the beginning when I started sharing testimonies, people were already getting saved, getting reconciled, getting healed. Because it, you're sharing of what is real in your life. You may not be an expert in the Bible yet, but you know what? You're an expert in your own life journey. You know what has happened in your life. And that's what God has called you to be a witness for. A witness, is, a witness is someone who has seen something, experienced something, and is retelling the story. Isn't that true? You know, you're an expert of your own life. You are, you are an expert on the own journey, that, on, your, on the journey that you have taken and the experiences you have had with God that nobody can take away from, can take away from you. Neither can anybody share on your behalf like the way you can. So if you don't share it, it's lost forever. And God's glory is covered up by you, by your reluctance to share the good things that He has done in your life. So you would have noticed by now, you know, from the many times I've ministered here on this uh, pulpit, that I often share testimonies, even when I'm teaching, or, or, or I use testimonies to elucidate, illustrate a truth, a concept, because testimonies illustrate how a truth has worked in someone's life. It's so it's really helpful. Testimonies help us to believe not only in the truth being shared, it also shows us how we might apply this truth in such a way that I can experience what, what the person who testifies have experienced. Testimonies create in me the faith to believe God for the same miracle you know, that that person testified about. How this truth can bring about that outcome. Amen. So testimonies help believers in this sense, you know, even when we're teaching the believers. But when it comes to unbelievers, pre-believers, you know, personally, testimonies remain to be my main focus. Without sharing, without quoting scriptures, without, without using theology. Because people may differ with you on theology, they often do, <laughs> People may reject your religious convictions and beliefs, but they cannot deny your personal experience of God. They can't negate, deny what you've experienced of His goodness, His reality, His power. That's why I find testimonies powerful. They are powerful. They bypass a person's uh, intellectual, logical defenses and all. You know, because it is your experience and they cannot take that experience away from you. They cannot say, no, 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 it cannot be. No, 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 I, I refuse to believe that happens in your life. And so our Lord Jesus commanded us to be witnesses for Him, to, to testify to others about Him. Did He not? Did He not ask us to do that? Let's look at this scripture in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Our Lord Jesus commanded us, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a, as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come. So this scripture reveals to us that testimony really is our basis for evangelism. What is evangelism? It is basically testimonies. We testify, all that we share, we are wanting to testify to the truth that Jesus is real. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the one, the, the Messiah who has come to bring salvation, to save us from our sins and to reconcile us with God. That's the goal of all testimonies. As believers, God has called us to be witnesses to others about Him and to be able to, witnesses, what do they do? They give testimonies, like in the court of law. Right? To convince others that, that there's something real here that is happening in my life. You might like to consider that. That God is real. So we've been called to be witnesses. Witnessing to the love, the reality, the power of God. And that's why evangelizing, evangelization is also called witnessing. Oh, I've been out witnessing. You understand? Because... The, Testimony is the basis of evangelism. So evangelizing is also called witnessing. 
So you will notice words like witness, testify, uh, testimonies. These are all associated with the a court in session, actually. Isn't that true? And when a witness testifies, what does he do? He's someone that, have, like I've said, he's seen something, experienced something that he's now declaring to establish the fact of what happened, the reality of what he has observed. That's the sole job of a witness in the court. Now, may I ask us, any one of you, you've heard of such thing as unjust witnesses. Have you heard of? Even you have not seen in real life, you have seen in movies, in dramas, of unjust witnesses. Who are the unjust witnesses? The witnesses that have taken something to give false testimony in court. They have been bribed to defend the, the guilty party in court. Or, 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 or witnesses who have been intimidated you know, from speaking the truth to step, to, for, and, and, and to defend the one you know, for the advantage of the one you know, that, that is guilty. Now, how do you feel, of this kind of, feel about this kind of unjust witnesses? I think any normal human being will feel uh, uh, an anger, a despise you know, of unjust witnesses. Well, what about you? Have you been a, a just witness? Have you been truthful to share what God has done in your life? Because you have this role, and it's my holy mandate this morning to remind you, God has called you to be a witness, and it is unjust for you to keep your mouth shut. It is unjust for you not to tell the truth of what God has done in your life. Isn't that true? It is unjust for us not to share about what God has done for us. So we are called to be witnesses for Christ. And from the moment we were born again, it is our duty, our responsibility to testify to other people about God. Actually, this is our, our greater role than our earthly jobs. You may be a lawyer, you may be a clerk, you may be a hawker, you may be a, an artist. But there's a higher call than that. You're a witness for the kingdom. Witness for the King Jesus. Amen? And God puts you in that job because in that environment is where He has assigned you to be a witness for Him to the people around you in their environment. We've got to know that. And you, you and I, we must be faithful witness, righteous witnesses who will tell the truth, who will do our job as a witness. What does a witness do? He witnesses. <laughs> Are you doing your job as a witness? All right. Now let's come to look at the book of Acts. I want us to look at some scriptures as our basis this morning. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. These were things they've seen and observed of what the Lord Jesus has done. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all the things he did. We witness by telling what we have observed of what our Lord has done. And he ordered us to preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. You will notice that the primary things that we witness about is what Jesus has been doing because what he does testifies to his identity. So the focus of our testimony is always on what Jesus is doing, what Jesus has done. Because that points us to the reality of him and his identity as our Savior. You know, sometimes, you know, testimony sessions can, can go wrong in the church, I've observed before, when people come up to testify and all they talk about is their achievement. You know, oh, I'm very good, you know, I do this, you know, my company goes this big. At the end, praise the Lord. That's not testifying to his goodness. <laughs> you, are, you, are, 
<laughs> You're just bragging about yourself. You know, testimony, we all, our testimony always focuses on what Jesus is doing because what he does points to who he is. Amen. Let's go on. Of him all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Wow, that is closing the deal now, bringing us to the conclusion that, look, he's the Savior. He's the one that saves you from sins. While Peter, now this is interesting, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. Do you know that whenever we testify for Christ as his witnesses, the Spirit of God moves on the listeners to reveal Christ to them. Amen? So don't let the enemy intimidate you into silence. The devil knows every time you share Christ, something supernatural is taking place. The Holy Spirit moves upon human hearts to bring conviction, to bring realization for their need for, for, for the Savior. So I want to encourage us, brethren, share about what Jesus has done in your life especially in this year-end season where, like what Pastor Ben said, where more people are open to, to hear about the Christmas story, the Christmas message, or to come to church more than ever before. You must lay hold of this season to be able to share your testimony. I want to give you, to relate to you as a mandate from God, share your testimony this season like never before, like never before. Because testimonies testifies to His divinity, it testifies to his identity of being the Son of God, the Savior of the world. It is powerful and it's anointed of God every time you share. John chapter 10. Let's look at John chapter 10. Chapter 10 verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, this testify of me. You see, the works of Jesus always Oh, always points to him as the Savior, that he is of God. So the things that Jesus does always identifies him as the Lord and Savior. That's why we major on what Jesus is doing, what Jesus has done in our lives when we share our testimonies with people. Remember, 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 the end goal of all testimonies is to reveal Jesus as the Son of God for all to be saved. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. The life that was originally separated from, the, from men in the Garden of Eden came back in the person of His Son. The life, not just any life. And this life is found in Jesus Christ. This is our testimony. This is our testimony. So have you been true? Have you been true in your calling? True to your calling as witnesses of Christ? You need to be intentional about it. It doesn't happen randomly. It doesn't. We have to be intentional about it. If you've been called, can I know um, in our midst how many are teachers in one way or another? Your teachers, your profession is a teacher. You've been employed to be a teacher. Yeah, here one, man. yeah, quite a number, huh? Yeah. Can you imagine now if you are a teacher, are you intentional about it? That's your profession. You better be intentional about it. In fact, you go for years of training in NIE and all that, right? And you're intentional in the way you want to present your material. You're intentional in the way you organize your lesson. Uh, uh, you're intentional even in going through first how you want to teach this lesson, this material that you intentionally put together. You are intentional because that's your profession as a teacher. You don't walk into a classroom and just teach at random and whatever comes to your mind. You don't do that. It's ridiculous even to, to, to suggest that. So what about the fact that your highest call is a witness? You ought to be intentional about it. You plan it. You prepare your heart. You organize your testimonies. You, 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 you equip yourself to be able to, to effectively share your testimony, the right ones to the right person, because you need to be relevant in your testimony to the person with his felt need at hand. You understand? You, you have to be intentional about it. 
And because we, we have to be intentional about it, I want to take a moment to talk about intentionality. God has called you to be witnesses and you owe it to Him to be intentional and even, even to be excellent in it. Because whatever we do for God, we, we always give Him our best. Do you agree? Amen. So we need to be intentional witnesses. I know there are many, many Christians who do not witness. Of course, they are not intentional. Not only that, they do not have a priority for it. They do not feel a responsibility for it. And it is sad because, the, because God has reconciled us and He said clearly in His in words that after reconciling us, He has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That He wants to use us to bring other people, the, the others who are His lost children, to come back to Him. And we do have this responsibility to be witnesses to testify to the world around us that He's real. You need to be intentional. Can I, can I ask you to help me preach? Can you tell the one next to you, excuse me, you need to be intentional in witnessing. You, you need to be intentional. You know, I'll wait because some of you are not doing it. I'll wait until everyone is... Yeah. You see, because this takes intentionality also, you see. Yeah. I want you to, to experience the first touch of intentionality. You have to be intentional. It doesn't just happen. Suddenly, you need to be intentional. No, you, you do it. You think it, plan it, you do it. So is witnessing. You have to be intentional. And because of this, I want to, I want to ask, I want to take a moment and tell you practically how to prepare your testimony. Because you have to be intentional. All right? How to prepare a testimony. Can you take notes? I really want you to take notes because I want to make it so clear, so practical. Everyone can be a powerful witness this Christmas this season, especially starting this season, all right? Because we know by now that every believer of Christ is to be a witness for Him, to testify to His reality so that others, many more others, may come to believe in Him too, which means everyone needs to be intentional in preparing our testimony to be shared with other people. I remember that when, when I started sharing testimonies with people, I was so enthusiastic because, because right from the beginning, I was already seeing people turning their heart to Jesus. You know. And so I not only share my testimonies, I share other people's testimonies too. Especially in the beginning when I did not have too many testimonies and I did not know many scriptures or what. You know. So I, I actually made it a point to remember all the testimonies I heard in church. Good testimonies, uplifting testimonies that I hear of my brothers and sisters share. You know, I will, I will also use their testimony where relevant. At that point, I wasn't a businessman yet. So when I hear about someone whom God has delivered from bankruptcy, you know, as a businessman, I remember it and I share it with my own brother and got him saved. You know, uh, testimonies are powerful. So you've got to be deliberate. You know. So because of that, as a habit now, I, I naturally remember most testimonies I hear. You know, from other ministers, miracles, breakthrough, and all that. I record it down because it's, they, are, they, they add to my repertoire of examples of the reality of God and the application of truth. So you have to be intentional about this. So I want to take a moment to quickly share some simple points how we can prepare our testimony. Okay? Yeah. Now, first of all, you need to be ready at all times. If today sitting here you say that, but you know, I, I don't have that kind of eloquence, I don't have that kind of knowledge, you know what? you have been silenced by the enemy. The devil has, has, has silenced you. Because the fact is, you have testimony. As long as you're born again, as long as you believe in him, you would already have come to, to experience him one way or another. The scriptures tell us in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony of God in them. Those who don't believe, unless you don't believe God, then you don't have a testimony. Those who don't believe God have made God a liar. <clears throat> they haven't believed the testimony that God has given about His Son. So if you believe, you are a believer, you already have this testimony in you that you believe. And share why you believe then. You already have a testimony. So I want to quickly put together a few essential points for us. All right, Essential points for us to prepare a testimony. Just to note a few points here. Number one is this. 
Your testimony is the story of how Christ has made a difference in your life primarily. Remember, to tell of His workings, what He's, he's done in your life. How, how He delivered you out of darkness, put you into light. Let's look at this scripture. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do His work and speak out for Him to tell others of the night and day difference He made for you. The night and day difference He has made for you. So your testimony begins with sharing how Christ has made a difference in your life. So remember, this is the essence of witnessing. Witnessing. Simply sharing your personal experiences regarding the Lord. In the courtroom, you got to know the job of a witness. A witness isn't there to argue the case. He isn't there to prove the truth of that, of that subject at hand. He, he isn't there to press the judge for a verdict. That's not his job. That's the job of the attorney, the lawyer. There are lawyers here in our midst. They would say amen to that. Witness simply tell of what he saw, what she experienced. That is relevant to the case. That's why witnesses do not have to be experts. Although there are experts in court sessions, but they are minority. Notice that it doesn't take certain qualities to be a witness. In, in the court, there are the buetu bae, there are the, you know, the hawker, the, the, the taxi drivers, the... All walks of life, right, appears in court as witnesses because they, are, they witness when their experience is relevant to the case at hand. That's why you don't have to be an expert to be a witness because you're sharing, because you're the expert in your own life, as I said just now. So don't let that thought immediately intimidate you. Oh, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm, I don't have enough scriptures in me and all that. It would be helpful. But you know what? You simply witness. So Jesus says, you know, just now we re read the scripture, you know, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my attorneys. He didn't say that. You will be my lawyers. You will argue a good case. No, he simply said you will be my witnesses. Uncomplicated. Amen. Actually, I find that I find that you know, personal testimony is really often more effective than a sermon. It is. It is, especially for pre-believers and unbelievers. You know why? Because pre-believers and unbelievers they often see us pastors or evangelists or people in the full-time ministry. They see us as professional salesmen. And they have this certain defense when, when I take a taxi and if I straight out say I'm a pastor, you know, they, you know, yeah. So I often don't say that, you know, yeah. Before I, sh I share the testimony or, I, 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 you know, share Christ with them. You know. the Pre-believers often see us pastors as professional salesmen, but they see you as satisfied customer. Your testimony has, carries more weight with them. You know, you are the customer. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So you can touch people that I can never ever touch. It's true, isn't it? It's true. So it is your role to witness everywhere you go. All right, so know that, know that. So with that, it relates to the next point, which is that personal stories are easier to relate than principles, than, than spiritual thoughts, you know, religious principles. Personal stories are always engaging because people love stories. Stories capture our attention. Stories lead us into that person's heart. Stories we can remember. Principles we may not, but stories we all can remember, especially the unique ones. And you know what? People want to hear things that, they, that, that they've never experienced. And that's why it sticks. So stories are powerful. Stories and personal stories and testimonies can build a bridge from your heart into the heart of the listener for which Jesus, on which Jesus can walk right into his heart. And your stories are unique to you that no one can share. 
like you can for your stories, how real it is to you. Amen. And the third point is this. Testimonies bypass intellectual defenses, like I mentioned just now. All right. Because people can, can may, may argue with you, you know, they may, and they, many would not accept the authority of the Bible, especially when they're non-Christians. But you know what? They would, they would listen to a very real, very personal experience and story. That they would. This is why you will see in the Bible on multiple occasions, I think about six occasions, that Paul used his testimony to share the gospel instead of quoting scripture. Paul, multiple occasions, used personal story, to, testimony to share. And so the Bible says, be ready to do that. Let's look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But have reverence for Christ in your hearts and honor him as Lord. Be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have in you. Be ready at all times to be able to answer. Be ready at all times. That's why I'm preparing us to be ready. So today, I want you to get ready. When you go home today, I really ask of you to already start doing this. Sit down, think through the good things that God has done in your life, you know, and I'm going to give you more points later on. All right? You've got to get ready. The Bible says get ready. Teachers get ready to teach. Preachers get ready to preach. A witness get ready to testify in court. To make his thought clear and cogent and succinct and effective, you, know, you, you need to get ready. So, so your, the four points of your testimonies are this, all right? The four points are this. Very simple. You start with this. Four points, main points of your testimony. What my life was like before I met Jesus. How I came to realize that I needed Him. What happened? What jolted you or some, an event in your life that caused you to realize that? your need for Him, and, and then what did you do with that realization? How did you then commit your life to Jesus? Because you want them to know how to do it too, how they too can, can pray, how they too can get reconciled with God. All right, it is so simple. Every one of us can do that. If you're a believer, you have gone through all of this. And then number four, the difference Jesus has made in my life. Simple, right? Now what it is like, what He has done since. All right, these are the four main points of your testimonies. Now I'm going to come back to the preparation of testimony. All right? Now. And then one more point. Other than that, the difference in all this that you've just shared just now are uh, uh, about your salvation. These are your salvation story, right? Now, apart from this, you have other significant testimonies in your life. You know, from, apart from a salvation, like how God delivered you from bankruptcy or how He... The supernatural protection in your household. I remember I shared here before about how God protected my son. You know, in fact, when I was preparing this message, I was crying all over again in the presence of God. If not for God today, I, I, I have one son less. Some of you know, know that testimony. My, my second son, I wouldn't have him. In fact, not just my second son, my elder son today would be a cripple if not for Jesus. Because when I came back from China, uh, uh, from being a missionary in China, you know, I, I went to buy a car. You know, and, and at the showroom, I went to collect my car. The, 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 the sales lady opened up the bonnet and showed me the engine and all that. And then I said, okay. And then I was closing my, my bonnet when it didn't close well. You know. Now, my son was with me, two and a half years old. Two and a half years old. Around, walking around, you know. And... and and when I couldn't close a bonnet, the, the sales lady said, no, no, this is how you close it. So she, that's when my two and a half year old son, when I put the hand in, into the car bonnet, you know, in, and that's when he, she slammed, boom! And I turned around, I saw the hand went in, shut, and he got stuck there, you know, and the lady screamed. I mean, he was, she was supposed to open the bonnet, but she just screamed and screamed and paralyzed with fear, you know, and the, the showroom, in the showroom, all the people ran to look at what is happening, and I like, no one, and, and I went in, I got to search for how to open, because it was new to me, the car, you know, and his hand was stuck, you know. He should rightly have all his four fingers smashed, 
smashed because it closes tight. We, you know, so I had to go to pull the lever from inside the car, open up, yank out my son's hand. There's not even a mark. His four knuckles should be smashed. We all stood there in unbelief because we look at the, the gap, it's about two millimeter. And the way she slams it, it would have been less than that, you know. And there was not even a mark. So my son knows that today he should be a cripple. He's, he should not have his four fingers, you know, but he has. That's a testimony. God's divine protection. There are other significant testimonies in your life that may not be about salvation, but they, are, they can be powerful. My second son, when he was four years old, we were in, having a holiday in, 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 in Malaysia. In, in the morning, we went down to the pool. My wife and I, nobody in the pool. And we took the two sons down and we were arranging our deck chairs and putting down our bags. The Holy Spirit shouted in my heart, Turn! And I turned. Nothing. I mean, no one, you know. And I thought, I saw a glimmer or something move in the pool at the opposite end. It's a big pool. I ran over there and I, my son was in there. He slipped away took the slide, went in, we heard nothing. The pool was this, this, his height was this. So he went down and he was at the bottom of the pool drinking water. I, that scene really seared into my heart. It's scary for me. It just, I cannot describe it. You see your son at the bottom of the pool, you know, dying actually, you know, with, with this stunned look and drinking water at the bottom. I jumped in, yanked him out. This was my second son. If not for the Holy Spirit, I would have lost my son. It would have been a tragic holiday that, that, that year. I cannot imagine living life without God. Oh, the goodness of God, the reality of God. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Testimonies, testimonies. You must be faithful to share of what God has done in your life. And you know what? When I recall all this testimony, every time you share your testimonies, your heart gets soft all over again. You get encouraged all over again of God's hand upon your life. So you not only encourage people, you encourage yourself. Amen? Amen? And I'm sure right now as I share, many of you, you start to recall the good things, the awesome things God has done in your life. And every time you have an experience of Him, you know, that's a testimony you should write down. And then you, you, you skillfully use a story where it is relevant for the need at hand when you are interacting with an unbeliever or with someone that you need to share with. Because different situations call for different testimonies. Amen? And so I, I have this very practical suggestion, you know, from personal experience. Prepare and organize your testimonies in, in, in different categories. And I find some of the categories that are very, very commonly relevant is about healing, for example. All right, note this. You know, if you have been healed before, you must share because many people are, are crying out for healing. You know, and your healing testimonies encourage your faith to believe God for it. In the area of healing, testimonies in the area of financial provision. Financial, how God has provided for you, how God delivered you out of bankruptcy and all of that. In, regarding money, very, very relevant, you know, one of the most relevant, you know. And then the third area is human relationship, relational restoration, you know, breakups and, and birth of divorce and, and all that. And, and you know that God has blessed you in this area or restored you in this area. It's so relevant, your testimonies. And they can find hope in God, you know, when you share your testimonies. And then the other areas, all the, all the you know, assorted testimony, protection, deliverance, God's stupendous blessing in your life. You know, get it organized. Be ready. Be excellent in what you do for Jesus. You know, and you find that if you're ready, He can use you even more. Much more. Much more. All right? And I want to close with, some, with this, some, something very practical. You know, reinforce your testimonies with prayers. All right? If you... Because, like, for example, this year end, I'm going to ask of you to pray at the end of this session whom you will intentionally reach out. And once you have decided or the Holy Spirit has shown you who to reach out in this year end, I want you to reinforce it with prayer. That means pray for that person before you share. It makes a lot of difference. 
bathe that person with prayer, intercede for that person, that God you will touch that person, soften his heart, you know, and, and, and show me how I can connect with this best friend again in my primary school or whatever. You know, you pray, you ask God, and then you strategize, you plan and you reach out. And you already bathe that person with prayer. Prayer already, already softened that person's heart, conditioned him to be able to, to allow the seeds of truth to fall into his heart. Not only you pray before you... Now, this, I say where possible is because there are many times you meet people on the street, there's no chance. You know, taxi driver, I've gotten so many taxi drivers say, you know, and, and, and in heaven there'll be many taxi drivers that come to me. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really, really. But you know what? There are those spontaneous times where you have no chance to pray. That's what I mean. But you know, those whom you are strategic about, you pray about, you know, you can pray for the person first. And you'll find that, wow, it makes a lot of difference. I find that prayer makes a lot of difference. Prayer before and prayer after. Prayer after the testimony. After you share, offer to pray for that person along the line of what you just testified about. Because as I mentioned just now, when you pray, when you testify to someone, let's say about a, you know, this person just went through a financial calamity and you have a story to share how God kept you from bankruptcy or delivered you out of bankruptcy or something, it's relevant. So you share the relevant testimony, right? When you share your testimony, as I shared just now, it creates a faith in that person's heart to want to believe God for the same miracle. So don't waste that after you share where possible. Ask, can I pray for you? Most of the time, if your testimony is relevant, most of the time they will say, yes, please. You know, whether it be for healing, for a situation or a marital breakup and you know God has restored your marriage before or whatever. You know, after you share, offer to pray for that person. And often in that prayer already, you lead that person to the Lord. After you pray for that person, the Spirit of God would have moved on him so much that he's so open when you say, would you come and pray this ultimate prayer with me that God can come into your life and save you and restore your household. You know, I just did this just yesterday with a man who came to me and said, would you pray for me? My wife is leaving me. You know, yeah. And with a prayer, you can lead him to the Lord. Amen? Very practical, very practical examples I want to share with us. So, be a doer of the word, not be, do not be a hearer. So I really want to challenge you. If you can't do it by today, you can't do it anytime. You've got to respond to the truth immediately. So I want, to, I want to, to, to ask of you today when you go home, do that. All right? Sit down and think through. God will remind you of the things He has done in your life. And you'll be so blessed when you recall God's goodness. And then you, you jot it down. You know, some of you don't have to write it down verbatim because that itself is a memory Jolter, you know, it, it jolts your memory to, be, to, to know your repertoire of testimonies you have that you must be faithful to deliver as a witness. All right, do that by today. Do that by today. I, I, I want to share with you this scripture now. I want to leave with you with this scripture. This is the call that God gave Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. I believe that it applies to all of us, all of us children of God. And today, I want to end with this scripture by pronouncing it over you as a reminder of why God has appeared to you in the first place. Has God appeared to you in your life and brought you back into His arms and to, be, to belong to Him? Well, it's for this reason. And this was what God told Paul, which is relevant to us all, which I want to speak over you. I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. And I want to remind you, this is also God's word to you. You have been called by Him to be a witness of all the things that He has done, all the things you have seen, and all the things that He will yet reveal to you. Be reminded, you are a witness for Him first, before even your profession on earth. Amen. So I want you to take a moment now and think, what has God done in my life that I can tell someone about? Just think of one thought. Please work with me. I really feel an urgency about this. What's the one thing I can share? Even within a minute, I can share that one thing that I'm so thankful to God about. I'm sure everyone can think of something, right? 
I'm sure. Right now, be a doer of the word. I want you to turn to the one next to you. In one minute, surely you can. In one minute, tell this person of the one thing you can testify about Jesus and His goodness in your life. Now, one minute. Tell the one next to you the one thing. I will wait until everyone is doing it, all right? So the one minute for you may be 35 minutes for our waiting. So everyone, all right, turn the, the one behind you. If there's no one beside you, turn to one beside you. Tell someone one minute. Surely you can do that for Jesus. Surely you can do that for Jesus. The one thing you surely can give thanks for. Okay, the one in red is your turn now to the one in green. I want you to know you can do it. We cannot keep our mouth silent. You cannot. We cannot. Not for what He has done for us. You say, but, but this person is born again already. Never mind. Encourage his faith or her faith. Come on. Put marvel in the person's heart for the reality of God. Oh, for the grandeur of His love. The greatness of His power. Let's all rise. I declare over you in the name and authority of, the, of our Lord Jesus, I declare over you that you shall be a faithful witness. I declare over you there will be no unjust witness in this house who will keep your mouth silent of what God has done in your life. I declare over you that God will take away cowardice. God will take away unfaithfulness. God takes away the fear of men that ensnare you. The intimidation of the devil. I, I declare over you freedom. He whom the Son sets free is truly free. Free from the fear of men. Free from the intimidation of the devil. You will be a witness for Jesus. You will be a witness for Jesus. You will be a witness for Jesus. You will not be ashamed of the Lord. You will not be ashamed because He's already been shamed for you. You don't have to be ashamed. He was hung naked on the cross. Creator hung naked on the cross for creation. Shame has been taken away from us. You will not be ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto him who believe the Jews and the Gentiles all who would believe and I declare over you that a holy bonus come upon you a holy compassion and urgency of the Holy Spirit comes upon your heart that you will not let another Christmas go by without telling someone the story of Christmas the reason of Christmas he was the reason we were the reason He died. Now He ought to be the reason we live. And this Christmas, you must tell about it. Let us pray. Father, Father, we thank You for reminding us that You have appeared to us because You want to use us as Your witness to the nations, to the world around us, starting with our family, our workplace, our neighborhood, our school, Lord, thank you for reminding us that we have a calling so important way above our earthly profession. And that is to be a witness for you. A witness for you. Lord, we repent that we do not give priority to this. We repent for unfaithfulness as witness. We repent for not being intentional about this when it is our high calling. And today, we ask, Lord, that you put holy boldness in us. We thank you for the grace of repentance. And we ask you to put this holy boldness in us and this compassion in our hearts, Lord, for the people who have yet to be reconciled with you. And Lord, would you send us out? Would you send us out 
to tell the world of what you have done in our lives. Use us, we pray. Lord, we pray that in this Christmas season, in this year-end season, Lord, that every one of us, every one of us would go out and tell someone about Jesus, the reason for the season. Thank you, Lord. It's a simple prayer, Lord, but we know it would have a profound, profound impact in our life when it comes to pass, that we become witnesses for you as a lifestyle, Lord, and as a priority in life. We thank you, praise you for your grace. Thank you for your empowerment. We shall be good stewards of the power that you put within us to be witnesses for, for you. From in Singapore and to all the regions beyond. And we declare by faith, we will live true. We will live true to this call that you have placed upon us. In Jesus' name, we agree and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to the River Life Church podcast. If you would like more information on who we are, please visit riverlife.org.sg.